Good morning. What a lovely day. What a lovely day. And what a wonderful opportunity for us to gather together and worship the Lord, which we, uh, we do each week. And as we gather today, let us uh, start by considering something for which we are thankful to God. Can you come up with something that is going on in or around you? Maybe it's the weather, maybe it's circumstances, maybe it's a health issue that God's been at work on, maybe it's uh, something to do with the relationship, some blessing that you've seen that falls from God's hands. As we're worshiping today, let's find ways to lift those back up to the Lord in thanks, because that's part of what worship is comprised of, right? We sing, we pray. We notice the Lord, we recognize our dependence on the Lord and the way that the Lord pours out blessings in our lives. So, as we come together today, whether it's here in this room or whether you're joining online, let's take a breath, let's be here, and let us worship the Lord. Because God, you are good and you are great. And you are full of love and grace. We know that well and have seen you at work in us and around us and even through us. Thank you for some time together to remember your blessings, to consider who you are and what you're calling us into. And so, Lord, as we spend these next moments together in your presence, won't you meet us and Speak to us in ways that we can hear. We're grateful for that and for all your many blessings. We come now in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand for our call to worship. From Revelation 4. Revelation which is a book that is centered on the worship of the risen Christ. You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will, they were created and have their being. Amen. Let's sing together. Thank you. 
the children's sermon. lesson today is going to talk about caring for other people. Do we talk about that at the church all? I think all the time, don't we? Yeah. And did Jesus care for other people? Oh my goodness, yes. So much so. Yep. Do you try to care for other people? Nice. What kind of things can you do to care for other people? Help people. Help people. Yes. Yes. Can you think of anything, Lydian? Say hi. Just be friendly. Absolutely. One of my favorite phrases that you hear a lot now is, in a world where you can be anything you want, and people like to say, what do you want to be when you grow up? Anything you can be, be nice. Oh my goodness, such an important thing. One way to be nice is to share, right? And that's it. That's Sometimes it's easy things, and sometimes it's such an important thing. I gotta tell you about something that happened to me this week that had to do with Sherry. It was Monday. Do you remember something special happened on Monday? What was it? The solar eclipse, yes. Did you get to see it? Both of you. Oh, yay, yay. Well, I knew it was coming. I heard it on the news forever and ever, and they said, oh, you can buy your solar glasses anywhere. Well, I waited too late. And when I tried it, everybody said, nope, we sold out last week. Can't get them, can't find them, nobody has them. Oh my goodness, I don't even have time to order them at that point. And I was bummed, I was so mad, because I really wanted to see it, but it was my fault. I did not do what I had to do to get glasses. So Monday morning, the day of the eclipse, a dear, dear friend of mine comes up and says, hey, Wendy, come watch the eclipse with us. We're going to sit outside. We're going to have our glasses. It's really cool. It's going to be fun. Come with us. And I wanted to do so bad. And I said, oh, I can't because I goofed and I didn't get my glasses. And he said, I have them. I'll share. Wasn't that nice? And uh, <laughs> he will never know what that meant to me because I was really upset. I wasn't going to see it. And a simple thing like saying, come on, I'll share mine. So I went, we had a great time. It was wonderful. And I'm so glad you got to see it too. So when I think about sharing, a lot of times you share food, right? And some of the candies are good for sharing because they're two part, like a Kit Kat, right? So Kit Kat has two parts and you can share, if you would like, one of the parts. But you know what, that's up. Really tiny piece of candy. <laughs> you're not going to get much. You're not going to get to share much. That's not the point I want to make here. I want you to be generous with your share, okay? Because that's what makes it really cool. So I have, for each of you, two big full size family of four Kit Kat packs for each. Of you. There you go. Did you get one for you and one for Cher. Okay, so that made you smile more than that teeny little Kit Kat did. <laughs> so my lesson today is to share and to share generously when you can. Okay? Because that's what God does to us all the time and he wants us to do with each other. All right. Thank you very much. You may go to Stepping Stones.
what we all else do, save that thou art. Thou, my best thought, by day or by night, waking or sleeping, thy presence thy light. Such a good charge and aspiration. And as we approach the high king of heaven with our hearts open and our desires to acknowledge ways that we have turned away, let's trust this one who both calls for our confession and also offers forgiveness. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. Wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Again, we pray. You have rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son you love, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of 
sins. Good morning. Today's scripture lesson is from Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. It can be found on page 1672 of your pew Bible. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as, Je as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, and that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord for our good. God, thanks thanks be to God. God. And Lord, as we come to this passage this morning, as we listen to what it has to say to us regarding our interactions, our commitments, and our Lord, would you please draw it into our hearts and minds in ways that bring about good fruit for your glory. Amen. In this passage today, we hear Paul raising some issues that need attention at Philippi, specifically unity and humility. We don't know what caused the problems that Paul is noticing and speaking to, and in all likelihood, it's most likely not one item only. Problems like these tend to have multiple causes. But it's clear what Paul wants from this church, and by extension, from all who follow Christ. Harmony as followers of Christ. A commitment to serving others. He grounds these instructions in a wonderful section about Jesus. Scholars have talked about this as a hymn that could well have been circulating before Paul included it here. We may be seeing one of the early songs of the church here. A song that focuses on the nature of Christ. And Paul uses that as the basis for what he wants to say to these people in Greece. But before we get there, we hear what Paul is after from these believers. The end of verse 2, we, say, we hear him say, Be like-minded, have the same love, be one in spirit and mind, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. In humility, value others above yourselves. Don't look to your own, own, to your own interests, but to the interest of others. The passage is dense. There's a lot going on there, and we really ought to notice that first word in verse 1 of chapter 2, therefore. 
It's a hinge word. It connects what Paul is about to say with what Paul has been talking about already. If we drop back into chapter 1 and verse 27, where Paul says, whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. It's sort of this overarching idea that here's the kind of people you should be, people who are mindful of what it means to bring glory to Christ and who live to that end. A couple phrases later, Paul will say, it has been granted you, in verse 29 of chapter 1, it has been granted you on behalf of Christ not only to believe in him, that is, the faith that you have for Christ is itself a gift from God. Recognize that, understand that, that this God who loves you makes it possible for you to respond in faith. It's been granted to you not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for him. We'll hear this from time to time from Paul, but every time it kind of catches us short that it's granted you to suffer for him. It's like that's a gift, that's a positive thing. Well, it helps to remember that Paul, like Jesus, whenever they encounter suffering in others, they are routinely compassionate and tender towards that. It's also worth recalling that Paul, like Jesus, experienced a great deal of suffering. He knew what that meant. He knew what it was like. He knew what it did in him. And he was wanting to prepare these people, both for the suffering that he was undergoing because that might have inclined some of them to think, well, if Paul is in jail, he must have done something wrong. If Paul is facing all of this tribulation, surely it's something that he has, because of some error he has committed. Paul's wanting to put this suffering in a different place. He wants to Help them understand that committing to a life of faith in God is going to bring about and provoke conflict with those opposed to God and that offering suffering is a consequence of that. In suffering, those who, because of their attachment to Christ, find themselves accompanied by Jesus through the suffering. They find themselves experiencing, at least to some degree, what he underwent. And like so many others who have suffered for the cause of Christ, they have learned how suffering makes us aware of God's presence. The psalmist says, when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, that could easily be a reference to the difficulties that I experience because of my journey with God. I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Paul would speak about his sufferings and occasions where he is in difficulty of one sort or another for one reason or another. And he will talk about how in one of those times when he asked for relief from the Lord, what he heard was, my grace is sufficient for you. And so there is a way of seeing something of value in suffering that Paul calls us into. And he wants us to bear this in mind as we read these verses that open up chapter 2. Where Paul is explaining his concern for his call to harmony and humility. He's reminding the Philippians about God's activity in and among them. Remember the encouragement that you have because of your connection with Christ. Remember the assurance of his love. Remember the comfort that his spirit offers. All of these are available. Each of them can be experienced by these people. And in light of that, Paul is saying, hear these words of instruction. 
be like-minded. Be one in spirit and mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition. In humility, value others above yourselves. Don't look to your own interests, but to the interests of others. It's a series of rapid-fire directives where the message about harmony and humility is very clear. Think of the movies that you've seen where groups of various ones assemble for different kinds of reasons. Maybe it's for sports, or maybe it's to solve or commit a crime. Maybe it's to save the world. Have you noticed how often in those movies that there's conflict among the members called together either at the start or along the way? different reasons for the conflicts. Things have happened to the members before they got there. Or there's some internal trouble that make them react or respond inappropriately with others who are part of the group. But then over the course of the story, things change. The quarterback recognizes that he needs blockers. The dwarves discover that the elves are not terrible. Tony Stark learns that interdependence can be good. What creates trouble? What stirs up friction? What keeps a group from being productive, from enjoying one another? Again, there's no one thing. But these sorts of results are often caused when members devalue others, when they insist on personal demands, when they pursue their own agendas. Paul knows about such tensions. He's human. He's dealt with humans. He's seen lots of this. He sees it at Philippi. And so he takes his readers to Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage, but rather made himself nothing taking the very nature of a servant and being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Paul takes his listeners to Jesus, who had every resource, who had every right If there was ever an individual capable of doing everything by himself, this was it. But Jesus doesn't play that card. Instead, he lets go. He humbles himself. He serves. In the movies, once a group starts acting like a team, As the members get over themselves, as they help others deal with the challenges that they have brought in or that have surfaced because of the collection, then the plays get executed. The blip gets erased. The ring gets destroyed. For Paul, a church like the one in Philippi can be all that God asks of it once they set aside their differences when they value one another, when they serve, when they pour themselves out in love as followers of Jesus, whose example Paul wants them to see. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for what you give us. Thank you for how you sustain us. Thank you for what you invite us into. Thank you for providing what we need to pull that off.
Lord, as we focus on Jesus, on his example, would you inspire us afresh by your spirit to live in ways that honor you, that encourage and build one another. And Lord, with the conflicts that we face, with the trouble that we experience, would you give us grace and insight and the ability to deal with these matters so that we might live well. For we know that that is your desire for us and for each one around us. For this and for all your good gifts, we bring our thanks and praise through Christ, our Lord, the one we seek to see. Amen. In lifting others with prayer, we remember the Lord's work in so many lives, in so many situations, and it's a real privilege to enter into those and to join the Lord in concern for people and groups, individuals and groups. As we pray today, let's lift up those we know about Let's offer our thanks for what God is up to, what God is doing. And let's again offer ourselves to the Lord as possible responses to the needs we see around us. Let's pray. Trusting you, God, that we can come with matters that are great and small. because you are interested in all of them in this world and each one in it. And so we pray on behalf of government leaders, even to situations that seem intractable, that seem so mired in turmoil. God, we pray that these might look for you and in seeing you, seek your ways. We know you call your people into government service, and we pray, God, that those so-called would use what they have learned, would operate out of the strength of conviction, would raise their voice, would offer their hands in service of peace and justice. We pray for your church, God. We know that your church is all around this world, even as there are many groups of believers in our own area. And we thank you for these many expressions. We pray, God, your blessing on each of these congregations. We thank you for them. We pray that they would be effective in carrying out the work that you give in caring for those who are part of their networks. And we pray for this church. We pray, God, that you would continue to open our eyes to see what you give us to do, that you would help us to keep trusting you for all that lies before us. We thank you for the resources with which you've entrusted us. We pray wisdom in using those well. We lift before you the needs of the people we're aware of, 
those connected to us in various ways. And we name them before you now. Would you help us, Lord, to be faithful in prayer? Would you help us to see ways that you are at work, as you bring healing, as you bring strength and patience, as you bring wisdom and insight, clarity? And Lord, we pray for ourselves. We pray for your continued good work in us, that you would keep moving in us and through us. That our hearts might be inclined towards you more and more. That we would notice your activity. That we might thank and praise you often. We are grateful, Lord, for your faithful love, for your generous spirit, for the life that you make possible, for the hope we have of what lies ahead. And so we pray with confidence and with joy out of grateful hearts. coming to you in the name of our Savior and Lord, Jesus. Amen. With our offerings, we have another way of expressing our faith and our thanks. And whether we give on a Sunday morning like this whether it's online, whether it's here at, through St. Thomas or some other person, group, or agency committed to the Lord's work. May we be responsive and generous to the Lord's prompting in, in our giving. And adding our prayers that these funds are used in wise and appropriate ways. Lord, we acknowledge you as the giver of all good gifts. And as we bring these offerings now, we commit them to you. We thank you for them. And pray that we might continue to be enabled by your spirit through your blessings to give. Amen.
Good morning. For those who don't know, I'm Sandy Bartholomeo, and I'm honored to serve as an elder here at St. Thomas. And here are some notes about some ac upcoming activities and opportunities. Next Sunday, we'll have an update from the deacons and the elders at 1030. This will also be a congregational meeting where we will vote on some building improvements. More information about this has been sent out, and we encourage everyone to attend. Baked goods are needed for April 23rd when the hospitality team plans to open the election cafe for those who stop in to vote. <clears throat> Mark your calendars. The Planning and Leadership Committee will sponsor an all-church volunteer appreciation event from 5.30 to 7.30 on Sunday, April 28th. Everyone is invited to the night of fun, fellowship, music, and food around the fire pit. This is a rain or shine, and if it's a rain event, we'll be inside. See the colorful folders in your bulletins this morning with some more details. Come down to Fellowship Hall after the service for <clears throat> Friendship Cafe will reserve coffee and tea, tea never gets mentioned, snacks and time to chat with others. At 10.30, there is a conversation about Loop 9 in the adult forum. And on your way to the Friendship Cafe, Check the hallway bulletin board for sign-up sheets for the upcoming home fellowships and the pastor's farewell potluck on May 5th. Thank you. Please stand. So this has been a great week, right? Solar eclipse, lots of rain, beautiful day like this. Every day, every day, made by God and full of possibilities. And as you go out into this day, whatever lies ahead this day and the days to come, would you do that with your eyes on the one who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness? to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. Amen? Amen. Amen.